Hello everyone, it's Imran here. Welcome back to another video. So I'm going to react to another Thomas Audio, her fan made Thomas Audio story by Kiefer Adams. This is episode 7 of season 5 that was uploaded earlier today, which is called Life on the River it is. So the last audio story I reacted to just now was uh, Percy and the Engine Gala, and that was quite a sweet story it was, I will admit. If you want to see my that out, I will have it up in the top right corner of your screen. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Basically, what I've got to say. So it's going to be about uh, this little boat. I guess we saw, you know, in some shops in season seven. We are we're going to learn a bit of a backstory to it right there. But don't know what's going to happen in this one. So let's go ahead and see. I mean, I really enjoyed the engine gala one, so hopefully, I enjoy this one as well. The links to I'm reacting to in the description down below, as always. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this. Wait, is it recording? Yep, it is. Hundred percent recording. Life on the River, written and told by, by Kiefer, Kiefer Adams. Adams. There are many types of oh, non-rail vehicles on the island of Sodor. Story as well. There are helicopters like Harold, buses and cars like Bertie and Caroline. There are steam-powered vehicles like Trevor and George. Construction vehicles like Jack and the Sodor Construction Company. Yeah. And the occasional lorry. But there was also plenty of watercraft on the island, such as canal boats, which glided gently across the lakes of Sodor. You could also see a fishing boat or two at the Norumbi village. These were half of the red tank engine's favourite sights to see. But there was one type of boat that some of the engines remembered from long ago. That thanks to the Admiral, was going to be put back in service very Ooh. soon. One bright morning, Thomas was making his way to the Normby fishing village to help Arthur with some shunting. Thomas didn't like the smell of fish, but something on the water made him forget all about it. There on the ocean was a beautiful paddle steamer, painted white and black wow. and covered in bunting. That is actually quite a is cool boat. Is that what I think it is? asked Thomas. It is, said his driver. It's Lakeside of the Third. Lakeside Lake of the Third had been a beautiful attraction in the early days of the railway. It was a paddle steamer that used to provide tours across the narrow gauge railway. The okay. boat had not been used in years, but the Admiral wanted to restore it. He waved from the boat's hull to Thomas. Does this take place after a certain hit error episode? Because I actually have a feeling it is, but just let me know. I say, down below Thomas, what do you think of this? Okay. He asked. She's wonderful, sir, said Thomas. But why have you restored her? Lakeside of the Third is going to give tours from the Maritime Museum, replied the Admiral. So it must be after Thomas but and I the treasure. But I want to give her a test run first to see how well she can handle. After that, I will put her back into full service at the Marantine. Good luck, sir, called okay. Thomas. With a deep, rumbling hoot, Lakeside of the Third came to life and paddled away down the ocean. What a majestic sight, said Thomas, as he watched the boat drift away. It wasn't just Thomas who was mesmerized by the return of Lakeside of the Third. Many of the Fat Controller's engines remembered seeing Lakeside of the Third in her glory days and talked endlessly about it. Wow. I was still painted in my furnace colours when she was put into service the first time, Ooh. Edward said to Emily at the docks. I remember collecting passengers from her when I was first put in charge of the Express, said Gordon grandly. She must be a majestic looking boat, said Emily. Oh, she is said Edward. Lakeside of the Third got her name because she used to sail across the lakes of Sodor, said Gordon. She also gave okay. rides on the narrow gauge railway. I'm sure Reneus and Scar Lowy would be delighted to see Lakesider back in service again. I wonder said if Edward. they will. The engines were just blown away with Lakeside of the Third's return. But later that day there was trouble. Uh -oh. James was making his way back to the yards from the docks, having just delivered some cargo to Cranky. As he was puffing along, 
James spotted Lake side of the third up ahead. What's going on here? But the paddle steamer didn't look well. Oh. As James drew near, he was shocked to see dark smoke billowing from the boat's stack and around its rotating paddles. Goodness me! cried James. The Admiral burst out of the cab and waved. James, we've got an emergency! he shouted. Lakeside of the Third has blown her engine. Uh -oh. We can't get back to Norrenby. I'll see if I can find help, shouted James, and he hurried down the line as quickly as he could. None of the engines would be able to rescue Lakeside of the Third, but if a spare boat could be found, or even a barge, then there was a chance. Okay. James met up with Toby at Bluff's Cove and told him the situation. Don't worry, Toby said. I know just where to go. And he and Ooh. Henrietta hurried out of the station. Uh, how are we supposed to rescue something that we can't reach? Asked Henrietta. I've got that taken care of, said Toby. Toby thundered down the line until he reached Tidmouth Beach. He stopped suddenly. Henrietta was confused. Toby, we're supposed to get help, not catch the sun rays. Bear with me, said Toby as he started to scan the beach. I'm looking for... Aha! He cried. Toby found exactly what he was looking for on the what? beach. He then pulled quickly away again. Toby! Protested Henrietta. What's going on? Once I've found a mechanic, said Toby, you'll understand. Balls throw, and Toby get continued back into puffing up the line. A little later, I Percy it. was at the Sodor River Bridge with some holidaymakers. Ball they stroke. had all been looking forward to seeing Lakeside of the Third pass under the bridge. Ball stroke she puts back into showed. service. Just as Percy was about to take the holiday makers home, he heard a familiar horn in the distance. It can't be, he exclaimed. It is! And sure enough, there rumbling towards him was Bolstrode, an old barge that Percy was very familiar with. Hello, Percy, called Bolstrode. Long time no see, eh? Percy was just about to protest why Bolstrode was back in service when he noticed the Admiral in the barge's hull, surrounded by fish, seaweed well done, Toby, and Toby, for getting shells. Bolstrode back in service. What's going on? asked Percy. Toby managed to bring a mechanic to restore this incredible barge, said the Admiral. He's taken us back to Norrenby, and then he'll tow in Lakeside of the Third, where she'll have much repair. Oh, well, uh, well done, Bullstrode, not expecting that whatsoever. said Percy, unsure what to make of it. Bullstrode returned to collect Lakeside of the Third after taking the Admiral back to Norrenby. The paddle steamer was soon restored and now gives rides around the Maritime Museum. As for Bullstrode, he was more than happy to be back in service too, and currently resides at the docks. And now, Bullstrode and Lakeside of the Third are two old faces back on the water once more. I just wasn't expecting that right there. I was not expecting Bullstrode to be put back in service right there, particularly in the TVS canon after what Percy what Percy did to him right there. But that that was that was that was unexpected. That was just completely unexpected right there. And Percy's reaction just said it all. Though we didn't see Percy's face, I'm pretty sure his reaction just pretty much said it all right there. Wow. I mean. Well done, Toby. I was wondering why he was stopping right there, but you are. But he used for Toby using his his uh his knowledge was able to get Bullstrode back in surface, and that was definitely a good idea right there. But Lakeside the Third is a really cool boat. Must take place after the events of Thomas and the Treasure because because of how the Martai Museum was mentioned. But definitely a hit era style story. This was right here. Probably would have made a really good slice of life hit era story. Most of Kiva's audio stories are pretty much slice of li life anyway. So, yeah, and yeah, that uh, that was actually quite a cool story, focusing on the waters rather than the railways. Although the railways did still play a role in it, 
And uh, yeah, I've got nothing else to say. I think I still prefer the Engine Gala one out of the, over this one, over the two stories we had this weekend. But this was a close second nonetheless, Life on the River. If you want to check on my previous Thomas reactions, whether it's an audio story or trains adaption, I will have a playlist up in the top right corner of your screen right now. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button for me. Let me know in the comments down below. Excuse me, what you thought of this audio story I reacted to. Also let me know in the comments down below what other videos you want me to react to next. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. Links to both of them will be in the description down below. Share this video, subscribe for new here, ring that bell to get notified when I upload new videos when I post in the community tab. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.